Okay, tying the Deadly Empty Shiner tonight in size 12, and this is, I believe, a three times long hook shank, or four times long, excuse me. And then once we've got our fire orange thread here, and this is a six aught uni thread, I'm going to cut off the tag end. Grab my 015 lead three lead free wire, excuse me. And I'm going to grab one end of it here in my hackle pliers. Place that directly on top of the hook shank and then start making wraps. This technique lets me get these nice tight wraps with the wire. One, two, three, four, five, six. Seven and let's do ten. Nine. Yeah, you don't have to do any lead really on this if you don't want it, but uh, I like adding a little bit of weight to these. It's still completely usable and fishable with my two weight or my three weight, but you can also use it with a four, five, six and throw it to bass and have a grand old time. So now I'm just making a few wraps over and through this. Starting to build up the ramp a little bit. And right there, we are going to come in <clears throat> with one of our three colors that we're going to use on this fly. I am using a pearl. Excuse me, I've got some lateral flash there. I'm using a pearl body braid, silver, and then I've got just some some red here and I'm going to use we're going to do the tail and the pearl here to start I leave this on the spool makes it that much easier to deal with and I'm just going to come in holding it against the near side of the hook shank take a wrap or two over it shorten up those butt ends and then wrap over them And now, yeah, I backed off a little bit there, and that's actually where I want that, right about midway on the hook shank. And now we're just going to make a series of loops with this body braid. For the size 12, I like to keep these loops nice and short. So you see I pull back with one hand to give me the loop shape, keeping the material nice and flat all the way through. Pinching the material to the shank with the other hand. Switch and then just do a little pinch wrap here, right there on top of the hook shank. And once we're sure that we like where that is, give it a wrap and a pull to snug it on down there. Then we're just going to keep rotating around the hook shank and making loops. This is an incredibly easy pattern to tie. I have this in my box at all times and I pass them out to everyone almost every chance I get it's just something that everyone should have in their fly box and it really doesn't matter what color you tie this in it's going to be very effective it was created by this guy Dick Empey who's a local or was a local angler uh, he passed on I think a few years back um, and he created this pattern. Um, the ones that I saw that he did were only in one color, um, and I've sort of varied on that, and I've been doing these tri-color shiners that I've seen great effect with. So like I said, we're just rotating the hook shank little quarter turns at a time with our vise there, making a loop, and we'll just give one wrap over it check it make sure that it's the length we want in the back here and then give it another wrap or two and pulling down to lock it in there and you just sort of do this all around the hook shank and one way I've sort of described to people and how to tie this is to visualize the hook shank as a square and you want to tie in a loop on every side of the square but in point of fact 
you're tying them in sometimes on the corners of your square and you know you just gotta play with it and figure out what works best for you some people like their tails longer and sparser some people like them shorter and denser like I do um, I'm just sort of, like I said, working my way around here, just making these loops, making sure the material is nice and flat, not kicking out to the side, which is a lot easier when you're dealing with uh, it coming off the spool as opposed to the card, but I'll show you how we deal with that in a minute here. Here's our last loop for the tail section, right here on top of the hook shank, right where we started. Once we get that in place, I'm actually just going to wrap over this end of the pearl all the way up the hook shank. That's going to build out the body a little bit. and also help to make this material a little bit more resilient, which is the name of the game when tying flies. I don't know about you, but I don't like to keep tying and tying and tying because my flies are falling apart. Once we get up here, right to behind the bead, I'm going to snip this pearl body braid free right in there as close as I can and I'm gonna come in with my silver the other color that I'm gonna use here and then I'm just going to wrap this in same place right on top of the hook shank from the back of the bead all the way to where our pearl tail section starts here I'm just kind of preening the material back and holding it to the top of the hook shank as I get towards the end of it here. And once I get back here to the start of my pearl tail, we're going to deal with that red body braid that I mentioned earlier. We have it here on the card as opposed to the spool. And when you pull it off, you see that it's got these angular kinks in it like that. And to get rid of that, I'm just going to pinch with the two fingers on either side and pull down. And you can already see that after that first pass, we're already doing it much better. So I'm just going to give it one or two more of those. Really make sure that we get this nice and straight. And this length that I've peeled here, this is a good, you know, nine inches. And that's going to last for a few flies to say the least. So I'll snip that free from the card. And now this is going to be both my bleeding tail and the gills here. So I'm going to wrap this. I will rotate my hook to so that the near side is up now. Laying this flat I'm just going to have it right here extending right to the back of that tail section and I'm just going to give a couple of wraps over that with my thread before pulling this red back out of the way and we will advance the red thread back forward again to right here behind the bead. Now I've got my red secured I'm going to make wraps just laying the material flat so that we get the nice wide profile of the braid working our way up the hook shank with nice touching wraps and then once we get to behind the bead we'll wrap that off secure it in place And 
once you got that with a good two or three solid wraps of the thread you can cut the rest of your material out here and you can see I've still got a good length of this that I'm going to be able to use for the rest of the flies that I'm tying in this set. Now here up at the front we're going to be doing the exact same thing that we did in the tail and we're just going to grab with one hand make a loop starting here on top of the hook shank I have this extending you see where it extends just here past the start of the tail pinch that to the hook shank one wrap over the top check it make sure it's sitting how you like it one more again snug it down right in there inside that bead now we're just going to keep rotating and looping Now your loops don't all have to be the same length. I know my first few certainly were not. This is one of the flies that is certainly a testament to the statement, ugly flies catch fish, pretty flies catch anglers. Except this one does both, it seems. I'm just sort of grouping the body braid back as I loop around, make sure that we got a full covering here going on this front section of this fly. Just make a little loop, pull it back, make sure it's about as long as the other flies, laying nice and flat against the hook shank. go and we are almost done here boys and girls and people of all ages and we're just gonna do one more loop here right on top just like in the tail and we are almost done Now I'm just going to pull all these loops back, make sure they're evenly spaced here. Just sort of give them a little twist around before you give them the last few wraps with your thread. You can trim out that silver and now we're going to make a little hot spot here at the neck. Actually a pretty wide hot spot, but this is a big part of what makes this pattern so effective, in my opinion. Once we've got that built up a bit, I'm going to give it two sets of whip finishes. There's one, and here's two. And we aren't quite done yet. Gonna trim out our thread and don't put your scissors down because we're going to come in and we are going to cut each of these loops. So just insert one blade of your scissor, pull towards the back of the fly, and cut. And do that with each one of those loops that you just tied in there. Make sure that you aren't cut cutting at any other point on the loop aside from the middle. So like I said, just inserting one blade of the scissor, pulling towards the back, and cut. And then once you're sure that you've got them all, grab your favorite trusty comb, or in this case, cut up toothbrush, and just brush it out. And just work out all that braid and get that red all up in there mixed in with the pearl. This will also show you if you've missed anything in your cutting. And there we are. Just going to give that some of the old head cement and she is ready to rock and roll. I t started tying in this particular color variation just this uh, spring and it's already yielded some really nice results with 
the uh, warm water species, largemouth, smallmouth, sunfish. Though I have no doubt that if I started to bring this out for some of the mass trout or even started tying it in larger sizes for the striper that are now here, that this would prove a very effective pattern. There we are, guys. The size 12 bleeding tricolor deadly MP shiner. Thanks as always to tuning in to this Brackish Flies fly tying lesson. Stay tuned for more coming at you in the near future. Peace.